Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. 10,000 John Deere workers are on strike today. Other possible strikes could impact Hollywood and the healthcare industry. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest now in our top story at five. As the clock struck midnight, more than 10,000 John Deere workers walked off the job protesting in Iowa, Kansas, and Illinois. The vast majority of the union rejected a contract offer earlier this week. We need to let them know that they can continue to take our money and take our money and take our money. Workers argue even as the company's profits grew by 61% in recent years and their CEO's salary grew by 160% during the pandemic, they say their pay has actually been cut. John Deere released a statement saying in part it remains committed to finding a solution with its workers, saying we want to reach an agreement with the UAW that would put every employee in a better economic position. Similar scenes could soon unfold across America, including in Hollywood. 60,000 film and TV crew members could hit the picket lines Monday over what they claim are unfair working conditions. Our hours are really grueling and we need not just rest between the workdays and over the weekend but an actual meal break during the day. In California and Oregon, 24,000 nurses and other health care workers at Kaiser Permanente voted to authorize a strike over pay and better working conditions. At Kellogg's cereal plants, workers have been on strike for more than a week, saying hours are too long, upset over seven-day work weeks. Meanwhile, 4.3 million Americans, that's nearly 3% of our workforce, left their jobs in August, many looking for better pay and conditions. Iowa gas prices are at a seven-year high tonight, coming in at around 3.10 a gallon. Now, these high prices not only impact Siouxlanders, but also businesses that rely heavily on transportation to meet consumer needs. Jake Wandersheed is the executive director of the Foodland Food Bank. Food Bank of Siouxland, and he says that they raised their transportation budget by about $6,000 this year and that they'll have to make a difficult budget decision if these gas costs keep rising. The long-term effects for us is then there'll just be more money spent on transportation costs, um, freight costs to us, and we'll be able to spend less, less money on um, food for, for our, our program. Coming up tonight at 6, you'll hear from the owner of a tow truck company on how gas prices are creating an obstacle for their services. The city of Norfolk is telling its residents tonight to be aware of a COVID-19 outbreak among the city's EMS personnel. Fire Chief Tim Raggy says that about a third of the staff has tested positive for COVID-19 over the last several days. But they are still able to maintain a minimum staff and are receiving some help from mutual aid partners in surrounding communities. And after a year of contemplating the move, Norfolk police have merged their dispatch with Madison County. The change became official October 5th, meaning the new dispatch center will serve the police and fire rescue departments in the city of Madison, as well as in rural communities like Battle Creek and Hoskins. Norfolk Chief Don Miller spoke on why this merger was necessary. We're anticipating we, uh, some costs that we know are coming to Norfolk or to, to dispatch centers. And by joining dispatch centers, we can avoid the redundancies and, uh, and provide those services as one. Chief Miller adds that some of the costs are related to future renovation projects in the police building, like expanding the current dispatch center into the conference room. Another Democratic challenger has entered the field to try and unseat Senator Charles Grassley in the next election. Mike Franken is a retired vice admiral in the United States Navy and a Sioux Center native. He announced his candidacy today. The Sioux City resident challenged for the Democratic Senate ticket back in 2020, finishing second to Teresa Greenfield. Franken is the fourth Democrat to join this primary race. That field now includes former Congresswoman Abby Finkauer. Franken joined the U.S. Navy at age 22 and retired back in 2017. That was after 29 years of service. And it's time now for our check on the weather. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson standing by. Scott, I think today was the first day this season for me that I walked outside and said it feels like fall. It certainly does out there, Sophia. Uh, yesterday we had that breeze. It did make it feel kind of cool, but today just uh, genuinely kind of chilly conditions as we did have the presence of some clouds and high temperatures were only in the 50s and 60s. At least it wasn't quite as windy as our Wednesday was. 61 this afternoon in Sioux City, 58 in Spencer, 56 our daytime high.
Lehigh and Sioux Falls. Overnight lows look to fall back into the middle and upper 30s. Not quite as cold as this morning was. That's because we're going to have some more clouds above and you can see some sprinkles trying to work in from the west. We'll talk about potential rain amounts and what's coming up this weekend in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. All right, thanks, Scott. The Miracle League baseball fields at Riverside Park are getting a new addition tonight, along with some more park improvements. Work is currently underway to add a second turf baseball field, a bocce ball court, and a wheelchair accessible swing to the park. Turf for the 200 foot baseball field is expected to be fully installed by next week, with some fencing and signage to be in place by next spring. When the project is scheduled for completion, it'll cost roughly $650,000 and is being funded all by private donors along with a title sponsor from Shields. And night baseball and softball will be possible now with the installation of overhead lights. Pretty cool. St. Paul United Methodist Church is making preparations for its 150th anniversary celebration. Those events officially kick off with an annual pork chop supper. That's set for Saturday night following by a Sunday morning worship. That will conclude with a balloon launch and a cupcake reception. Preparations have been underway to accommodate the influx of people with work for the anniversary beginning about six weeks ago. The St. Paul United Methodist pastor says that she expects more than 200 people to attend this weekend's events and the church offers a live stream service for those who cannot attend this weekend's festivities in person. If you'd like more information on the services, you can visit our website right now at SiouxLandProud.com. Now to a collection of toy tractors, trucks, animals, and even airplanes. Enough to fill most stores at least more than once. But you won't find these collectibles in any store, right, Tim? That's exactly right. I <laughs> found the collection in Yankton, South Dakota today. And it's an interesting one. Thanks to the work of one Siouxland man, many toys meant for the scrap heap are getting new life. See for yourself in this week's edition of Siouxland Stories. This room here was part of in a street in Yankton that moved it out here, and, and this is what I created on it, but it ain't big enough. Meet 82-year-old Francis Laffey of Yankton, South Dakota. I've been here all the time, so I kind of study it, you know. By it, Francis means the hundreds, if not thousands, of miniatures that line the walls of an oversized farm building. But like them horses and wagons and stuff, I made them. I got a machine I can make the wheels and the wagon. I collect anything. It's just stuff I can find, you know. And therein lies what makes this collection so unique. But this piece here cuts the wheel out and that makes the hubs and the spokes. For more than 40 years, Francis hasn't as much been collector as he's been creator. Well, it, it, it's something that you get done and you get it rebuilt and clean it up and you did it, you know. I buy new ones and set them on the shelf and they're no fun, you know. I want something that's all beat the heck, so that's what I do. It. Taking what others call old and making it new again in this work shed where time stands still. Do different things, create something out of nothing. Well, I take them all, some of them all apart and take two or three and make one. Here I made two trucks and I've changed them over and they got international scouts and pickups on. By his own admission, Francis's fascination with toys came late in life. Growing up near Stickney, South Dakota, he tells me his parents didn't have a lot of money. We went to play. We played with a claw hammer, that was our plow. And we found a toy tractor in the junk one time, and we'd done that, and that was our tractor. But, that, but from then on, you start making your own stuff. I grew up on farms, so I can relate to it. You've got to relate to what you're doing. You know, like... It's, you don't relate to it, it ain't no fun. Since then, Francis, who never had kids of his own, says he's been a self-made man. Made this up because we got to have wood for the steamer engine, so I, mean, I, could, I could set it up for display, see. First, rebuilding lawnmowers, later teaching himself how to weld. Been a mechanic most of my life, and I can relate to fixing stuff, you know. I was a boat mechanic for 20-some years, you know. His time spent now working on much smaller vehicles. I'm out here, started about 10 o'clock in the morning after coffee. Yeah, I'm here till about three or four o'clock every day. It's not exactly a man cave, but it's his. Not even his wife really knows how much stuff Francis has amassed. My wife works 
And so that's where I hang out. You know, she don't have a clue. <laughs> the only thing she likes to do is we go to shows is collect the money. You know. This is the shop area. This is where I make. That's where I. I mean, here all winter. That's where I make, fix things, tear things apart, and start over. So, uh, you gotta have good hands. And you gotta have a good imagination. As time and space run short for Francis, one has to wonder what this collection of remade keepsakes might be worth. Somebody asked me that day, he says, well, how much money you got involved here? How can I tell? Because every day the market, like anything else, the market goes up and down, you know? So there is no value to it until the day you sell it. But until that day, Francis says he'll keep looking for more space on the shelf. How long do you think you'll keep collecting? Well, as long as I can keep it moving, you know? <laughs> Something tells me that'll be a while. If you know of someone with a unique hobby or skill, maybe just an interesting story to share, we hope that you'll share it with us. Just email news at kcautv.com with your idea. Sophie and I share Siouxland stories every Thursday at 5 and 10. All right, thanks so much, Tim. Well, a California oil spill is sparking new concerns tonight for the climate. You'll see why activists were on Capitol Hill about it today, coming up in about 10 minutes. And beyond a couple of showers tonight, we should expect a streak of sunny autumn weather coming our way, a chance of some frost on Saturday morning, and then a warming trend for next week. The 9 on 9 forecast right after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Depending on how early you were up today or maybe how late you went to bed, uh, it was chilly temperatures in it some was. places in the 30s and even some patchy frost you've been saying uh, was seen around Siouxland. Yeah, especially in western parts of Siouxland, Sophie. That's where we had the combination of clear skies and some calmer conditions. You might remember that we had quite the breeze yesterday afternoon. Well, you can see out toward O'Neill and Norfolk. That's where we had the temperature slip down closer to the freezing mark. In Sioux City, we also had a low temperature this morning of 34 degrees. So again, that yielded some patchy frost in the area. 39, the low temperature this morning in Denison, 40 degrees in Spencer. So definitely a cool start to the day. We did warm up pretty nicely for the afternoon into the 50s and 60s, but it is the second day of October that we've seen a high temperature below average. So the high this afternoon was able to get to 61. The usual high temperature for today is 64. And again, that morning low temperature came close to the freezing mark. We've seen some more clouds work in through the course of the afternoon as we take a glance outside. Kirk's Thursday, Friday and Saturday, but still a pretty nice fall time pattern with some mostly sunny skies. Continue to send in those pictures. We need some more weather at KCAUTV.com. When you send us your pictures, we'll send you a form, fill it out, send it back and we'll show your photos on TV. All right, and uh, I would love to see some early frost pictures. That's got to be interesting. Yeah, it looks like we'll have some more on Saturday morning, too. So if you missed seeing it today, again, get those cameras ready. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Well, during one man's four years in the military, the cost of housing went up significantly. You'll see how his fixer-upper turned into a community project. That's coming up in about six minutes. But first, environmental activists are on Capitol Hill today. Why they say abandoned offshore drilling rigs need to be regulated. Next. After a pipeline ruptured and leaked thousands of gallons of crude oil into the Pacific Ocean recently, environmental activists were on Capitol Hill today asking for more federal regulations. Rashad Hudson reports. California Congressman Alan Lowenthal says there's a ticking time bomb just off of America's beaches. Poorly maintained and abandoned oil and gas drilling rigs and equipment. The recent offshore spills need to be a wake up call for Congress because without stronger regulations, things will get worse. Thursday's hearing comes after a pipeline ruptured along the coast of Southern California, spilling over 100,000 gallons of crude oil into the Pacific. It's critical that we don't simply move on and wait for the next accident to occur. Environmental advocates want Congress to create financial incentives for energy companies to secure offshore abandoned rigs. This strategy must be environmentally sustainable, socially and economically effective for the people of the region and protect taxpayers. But Louisiana Congressman Garrett Graves says safe offshore drilling actually produces fewer climate damaging emissions than any other method. So if we're going to produce anywhere on the globe, it might make more sense to do. 
do it in areas where we do it safely and do it uh, within the rules. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson. A veteran with a growing family is facing a new challenge tonight, fixing up his future home. Why his community is helping take on the project with him. Coming up next. Everyone needs a roof over their head, and now one family is finally getting theirs. Kent Pierce shares how their community is coming together to make that possible. The house has been uh, set vacant for uh, over a decade, and so the town came in here after to take over because there's no taxes paid for 10 years. Habitat for Humanity paid the back taxes, took it over, and started work, wrapping it with insulation, new siding, new windows. So Habitat for Humanity had already put a lot of work into this house, but one thing kept happening. When it would rain outside, yeah, it would rain inside the house too. So obviously it needed a new roof. That's where the Owens Corning Roof Deployment Project comes in. Owens Corning donates the material. The local contractor, in this case Armor Shield, donates the labor. We're going to check all the plywood, make sure everything's all good there. If there's any bad plywood, we'll replace that. Um, we're putting a whole brand new roof system on for them. It's an effort to give back and protect veterans after they protected all of us while they served. It hits me in the heart to know that I'm able to and just as a way of saying thank you. It was very heartwarming, very touching. I couldn't thank anybody enough. It's really rewarding. The Gonzalez's have had to put plenty of their own labor into the house. That's how it works with Habitat for Humanity. I've worked hard. Uh, and, you know, it's paying off. Everything's paying off. Even the times that seemed like they weren't so fun and so good, it, now I, I, just, I just look at the good times because it, it just feels great. And it's always great to get a little help, especially when it comes from up above. Taking a live look outside right now in downtown Sioux City with sunny skies, Scott returns with one more check on your forecast. Welcome back. We should be able to avoid seeing any frost tonight with some more cloud coverage and a couple of sprinkles and showers, but not a whole lot to be concerned with there. Tomorrow, a high temperature of 60 and a mostly sunny sky, a strong breeze from the west northwest, gusts between about 30 and 35 miles an hour. Looking at the 9 on 9 forecast, a chance of some frost coming back as we head into Friday night and Saturday morning. After that, we're going to snag on to some warmer air with highs in the mid 70s next Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight at six with Tim and Jake. Until then, have a great night, everyone.